Hey, what's up guys? It's Mike with Alpha Reptile and the JungleVault.ca and today we are starting the brand new build for the Fijian Banded Iguana just behind me. Just before we get started, I do want to say a quick thank you to Hammer Habitats as well as Universal Rock. You guys are the bomb. Now without further ado, let's get started and show you what we got. This is Totoka's beautiful tank right here, made by Hammer Habitats. I wanna thank Richard so much for providing this for us, building a great tank in a reasonable amount of time and for a great price. If you guys are in the GTA and you want to have a custom habitat made for you, he is the man to go to. I'll leave his links and everything in the description, but what you're looking at here is a 48 by 28 by 48 inch, 280 gallon tank. Now that we have the tank covered, the first thing that we're gonna have to cover is the level. Lighting. In terms of lighting, we are using primarily Arcadia products. We have the Arcadia Pro Ceramic Lamp Holder with the bracket, as well as a 6% Arcadia Pro T5. At the very end of the build, we ended up adding two Arcadia LED bars just to add some light to the tank. It really makes it shine bright, but you'll have to wait until the end to see that. Now beginning the installation process of the lights, I'm just using the simple installation kit that comes with the bar itself. There's several different ways you can do it. I essentially just screw one end in and then line it up from there in order to set the second screw and bracket. There's definitely better ways to do it. If you have like a chalk line or something like that, that'll make it way easier and you'll get a perfectly straight line. I just eyeballed it knowing that I wanted it to be a little bit diagonal. After I had the placement for the UVB bulb, what I ended up adding was the Pro Ceramic light bracket. Again, super easy. All I did to install that was mark little holes with the screws where I wanted it to go. I pre-drilled them with a little drill bit just to make sure I didn't split any wood or anything. And then I continued from there to just screw it in. As simple as that. Now that the lighting hardware is mounted, I wanted to get some lights in there, plug it in and test it out for myself. As you can see, I am having a good time in these cold Canadian winters, sitting with a ton of UVB blasting over me. And I just took some time to buy. The only reason I came out of my winter slumber is because the Universal Rock had finally arrived. You can see Nick holding it, this massive custom background that I had done. Again, Stuart and the whole team at Universal Rock, thank you so much. This thing is insane. If you guys are looking to outfit your enclosures with the best products around, Universal Rock is definitely the place to go. Now, after getting the Universal Rock out, we had one more thing to do before we could put it in, and that is install a liner. I ended up buying some EPDM pond liner for the the tank because I didn't want there to be any leaks or anything of the sort. I wanted this to last a very long time. I know it was sealed and technically it probably could have held up to the humidity, but I just wanted to be entirely sure that that wood at the bottom wouldn't rot out with the soil being in there and being constantly moist. Now that we've installed the liner, it's time to try and install this background. After about a 20 minute struggle to get this background in, it became apparent that I did not account for a slightly smaller entryway into the tank and that this background was not gonna work. What we ended up having to do is cut the background with a steak knife. It cuts relatively easily. Thankfully, my time building at the Reptarium really helped me out here. All those hours cutting Universal Rock really came in handy at this point, but still, it was a huge pain in the butt and definitely make sure you measure twice order once. Now that we have the background cut and it is in the tank, it is time to secure the background to the tank and that can be done with just some simple hardware, a screwdriver or a drill and some screws. That's what we recommend. You can also use like a staple gun if you're interested, but we did not have one of those lying around and the screws will all be covered up with some silicone and the dies later on. You'll see the whole process, don't worry. We have the background all in and to seal the background, we need to fill the gaps with foam and then we actually have the like pigments and stuff that are actually used on the background to patch it essentially. So you, it'll blend in nicely and you won't be able to see any of these screws or anything like that. It'll all be nicely blended into the background. So it's foam time. Now what you're seeing here is the foaming process. We do this just to seal off any access points to get behind the background because we ended up having to cut it. In this case, I just foamed a little bit. What I ended up doing is covering the entire gray portion of that sidewall. In this clip, you only see a little bit of it, but I ended up going back after I had already colored and everything, foaming and doing the whole process again.
there it is all foamed up looking slick Alrighty, so that is a wrap on day one we got the back end you can see some foam back there everything all good to go we sealed up this side as well and tomorrow we should be able to carve it all up get some pigments on it and pretty much have it almost ready to go after the foam has cured, it is time to go back with our utility knife and chop the foam like you would any standard background. You're basically just looking to increase the surface area and have none of those perfectly smooth portions so that the silicone that we're going to be using can adhere properly to the foam. This is what you're going to need for the patchwork. We have an old paintbrush, silicone, and the dyes. It's really not difficult, but it is kind of challenging to do the first time. It'll probably take you a little while to get the technique right. You can see the canvas that we're going to be painting, which is all that foam. First, I'm going to lay out my dyes in a little tray. Now that I have all the colorants laid out in my tray, I'm going to make sure I have my paintbrush handy as well as my silicone. I'm gonna start with siliconing small patches of the foam because you really don't want the silicone to get tacky or start to dry. You do want it to be as sticky as possible. Let's start siliconing. The silicone is just like any standard background that you might do. You're going to apply it in thick globs and then spread it around with your fingers just to make sure all surfaces are covered. Now that you have the silicone all spread out and ready to go, what I'm going to be doing is loading the brush, mixing the colors. It looks super frantic, but there is a method to the madness. You load the brush with as many colors as you can, and then you dab it onto the background. You're not painting like a canvas. You are dabbing like, if you're an artist, like pointillism. That's exactly what you're doing here. Once your paintbrush gets globbed up with silicone, you're going to have to cut off the tip of your paintbrush. Like I mentioned, I spent hours and hours doing this with Brian Barczak at the Reptarium, as well as Stuart, the owner of Universal Rock and the founder of Universal Rocks. I would recommend doing a small portion outside Side of a very visible area in your tank before you go ahead and make this main masterpiece look kind of terrible with a spotty patch job. Hopefully that helps. If you guys do have any questions on this method, let me know in the comments down below and I'll do my best to answer it. Once you get the hang of it, it really goes by quick. I did this whole patch job, including filming in about 10 or 15 minutes. You have to work quick because silicone cures faster than you'd expect. Now with the patch job completed, it's time to get these logs in the tank. This giant one was a struggle to get in. The rest were fairly easy and I don't even think we filmed it, but this, this main branch that we ended up using for his build is huge and didn't really fit properly in the tank. After we got it in the tank, we ended up checking the UVI of various different parts in the tank itself. That way we know that he'll be getting a differential exposure to the UVB as well as the heat. Now skip forward a little bit. This is the final branch placement. You can see we have anchored them all in with screws that go all the way through the background and into the tank itself. And here you have it lots and lots of branches for him to perch on now that we have the branch placement in we can move on to the substrate now in terms of substrate it is a fairly simple mix uh, we have some of the forest bark from exoterra to add some aeration we have a bunch of coconut core we have some black topsoil or just black earth i think it's sometimes called as well as some coconut mulch or coconut chip that also will help with aeration in the long term and finally because we are going to be growing some pretty nutrient heavy plants in here we ended up putting in a bag of the earthworm castings this will add some fertilizer mixing this amount of substrate was definitely a back workout to say the least i ripped through at least two pairs of gloves and then eventually just ended up saying screw it and just doing it with no gloves but holy smokes this is definitely a well-rounded soil and i'm really hoping that the plants do well in theory they should so i guess we'll see over the next couple months how it looks now that we have the substrate mixed it is time to add it into the tank 
We ended up finishing around like eight inches of substrate in the tank and we compacted that as well. So it was probably around the nine to 10 inch mark. It's not shown in the video, but we did end up adding a bunch of springtails and some larger isopods in there as well, just to help the bioactivity portion of it. Now that we've added the soil and have made a quick trip to the garden center, you can see here we picked up a couple ferns, which are the silver lady ferns, which are actually native to Fiji. We also picked up this stake of potha as well as this palm tree. Now we did check with one of my friends who's a horticulturalist and he said that these would all be good. We also checked several different websites saying that these are fine for iguanas. Now that you've seen the plants that we are going to add, I'd like to talk a little bit about treating the plants before you put them in your tank. Obviously the best method is just buying them from the garden center, leaving them in like a quarantine bin secluded away in your house and letting them grow that way. Unfortunately, I know not all of us have that luxury. In this case, we just ended up having to go to the garden center, pick some up. I did talk to the growers there. They did not use pesticides recently on any of these, so I'm not worried about any pesticides. However, with that being said, I made sure to clear out as much of the dirt as I possibly could. I'm gonna bring it over to the sink. This will obviously take off more soil from the roots. A lot of places are using a lot less pesticides now and going more bio warfare, I suppose, using various different insects to fight and eat other insects. That's a whole nother video for a whole nother time. Now that we've unpotted all the plants, shaken off all the soil and given them a good hose down, it's time to start planting. Planting in your tank isn't really rocket science. What we did before planting and before cleaning it up is laying them all out, making sure we know where we wanted them. And then it was just a simple dig a hole, throw it in and you're good to go. And here it is, the beautiful Fijian banded iguana enclosure in all of its glory. Well, most of its glory. We're really hoping some of the plants take off in the back. You can see in the front we have the ferns, we have the palm tree on the one side, and behind that kind of draping over the middle branch, you can see that there is some like grass looking stuff. And that is actually native grass to Fiji that we let grow a little too long without repotting. So we're hoping it comes back, but right now it's looking a little bit sad in the back there. We do have a passion flower plant in here. We have the little tray at the back behind the palm tree for feedings. You can see up top, we have a halogen bulb sticking down. We ended up having to replace that with a 50 watt. That was a 75 watt. The day after this video was filmed, we ended up adding another 22 inch Arcadia LED bar to the very front. And this is what it looks like. A lot less shadows in the front. I really enjoy the spread of light much more this way. I think it's also beneficial for Totoka to have a little bit more intense lighting just so he can show off his true colors. That wraps up the build, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you smash that like button. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, leave them in the comment section down below. Make sure you click subscribe for more incredible builds and even cooler builds than what you saw today. They'll be dropping pretty soon on the YouTube channel. Stay tuned for a reptile room tour very soon, and we'll catch you in the next one. Later.